Famous at fairgrounds and high school football games, the walking taco or taco in a bag or Frito pie as some know it, goes by many names, but the idea is universal. Fill a bag of chips, usually Fritos, with a bunch of stuff that you might find in a good taco. And good taco is an extremely broad statement, so let me show you what I mean. Let's start with the braise because it takes the longest. In a blender, add one 7.5 ounce can of chipotles and adobo, then fill the can halfway with water and pour that in too. Add two tablespoons of apple cider vinegar, the juice of a lime, two teaspoons of cumin, and one tablespoon of dried oregano, then blend into a smooth puree and set it aside. This is a beef chuck roast that I seasoned liberally with sodium chloride and let rest in the fridge uncovered overnight. The dry exterior is going to allow it to brown up super nicely. Go ahead and sear that off in a touch of neutral oil on high heat in a large heavy bottomed Dutch oven. And really take your time on this step, we want a nicely seared hunk of buff here. Because remember, brown food is flavorful food. Once you've seared all the sides of the roast, lower the heat to medium and pour over the chipotle mixture. Grab yourself two bottles of your favorite dark cerveza and pour that in too. And if you don't have beer, good stock will do just fine as a replacement. Pour the beer to the shoulders of the beef, then add in a whole head of garlic, a cinnamon stick and two cloves, then a couple bay leaves and a sprig of fresh thyme. Season with a pinch of kosher salt, then cover the whole shadidly up and braise it at 300 degrees Fahrenheit for two to three hours or until fork tender and shreddable. Next up is our Poblano Crema, and this sauce is probably one of my absolute favorite flavors on a taco and it's extremely universal. Start by roasting two whole poblano peppers on an open flame on the stovetop. We're looking for serious char here. We want to burn the skin to black so that it peels off easily. Once the peppers are charred and blackened, transfer them to a bowl and cover with plastic wrap. Let the peppers soften in the steam for five minutes. Remove the peppers from the bowl and pull them apart to clean the seeds out. Use a paper towel to rub off the blackened skin, and inevitably there's gonna be a little burnt skin left on the peppers, which is a good thing, those smoky flavors are what makes the sauce special. In the blender, add two roasted and cleaned poblano peppers, two cups of Mexican crema, the juice of a lime, a pinch of salt, and half a teaspoon of MSG. If you can't find Mexican crema, substitute for sour cream, or better yet, creme fraiche. Puree the sauce until silky smooth, then transfer to a resealable container or a squeeze bottle if you got one. Okay, onto the accoutrement, or accoutrement, as we call it around here. Make a quick pico de gallo by gutting, then dicing some tomatoes up, and removing the seeds of the tomatoes just keeps the pico from being too wet and sloppy, so, you know, get rid of those. After the tomato comes half of a large white onion, dice that up too, then about half of a bunch of cilantro, and you can use a little more, a little less if you'd like, totally up to you, the juice of a lime, a pinch of salt, and I didn't add it, but you can also toss in a minced jalapeno if you're feeling spicy. Give that a mix just to work in the salt, then set it aside. I'm preparing a couple different cheeses, the first of which is this white wheel of queso fresco, or fresh cheese. It's an extremely mild cheese that's often sprinkled atop certain Mexican dishes, certain tacos included. You can crumble it up by hand too, which is nice, nice and easy. The second cheese varietal is just some cheddar that I'm shredding on the smaller side of the grater. I know cheddar might seem weird on a taco, but that's kind of originally how it's done, how it's been done, and I mean, talk about weird, this is kind of a weird dish, guys. From here, you can get creative and slice up whatever vegetables strike your fancy, whatever toppings you'd like. I'm going for some cabbage, iceberg lettuce for shredded lettuce, aka shreddice, jalapenos, onion, avocado, more cilantro, you get the idea. Have fun with it. If you're having a little walking taco night with your buddies, then more is more here, toppings wise at least. By now, the beef should be shreddy. Get it? Remove the beef from the oven, then let it cool down until you can easily handle it. Or you can pop some rubber gloves over some heat resistant ones, a little trick that I picked up from some pro barbecue guys this summer. Works like a charm. Regardless, you'll want to shred up all of the beef, just making sure to remove any of the bay leaves, thyme stems, and any garlic that didn't completely melt away during the cooking process. And from here, we are ready to build our tacos that aren't actually tacos. The classic OG chip to use to make a walking taco are definitely Fritos corn chips. However, anything really works. 
I'm talking Fritos, Doritos, Cheetos, really anything in the Eatos family is gonna get the job done here. Grab yourself a large bag of your chip of choice, then slice it horizontally, folding over the edges to make it look nice and neat. Plop the bag on the cutting board so it sits upright, then begin loading in your toppings. I'm making two bags here, the first of which is going to be a fully loaded taco americano type vibe. We aren't holding back here, everything is going in the bag. I'm talking seasoned cabbage, shredders, black beans, jalapenos, pico, onions and cilantro, and of course, <gasps> our shredded chipotle beef, followed by a sprinkle of cheddar cheese, which of course is classic when talking about a walking taco. In the next bag, we're keeping things classic, sort of, <laughs> by adding in our beef, followed by the diced onion, cilantro, and queso fresco. So normally, these things are served in single serving bags cut vertically, uh, usually sold and slung out of like, you know, concession stands, but I find that serving them this way, family style in these larger bags cut horizontally, is a little more fun to eat and a lot more nice looking. Finish each taco in a bag with a zigzag of our poblano crema, and boom, you are ready to crush. Look at these bad boys. Come on. Dang, I say. After you get the presentation out and it's looking all nice and cute, you can just like unroll it, give it a little shake, distribute the stuff, and um, this is not gonna be something that you eat easily unless you use a fork and a knife, which is actually how it's done, but I like to use my hands. Mm, mm. Mm. That's pretty much all I got for you, so until next time, I shall see you very soon. Cook on and enjoy taco time.